Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, my name is Susan Ryan. I am the Senior Director for the Greenhouse Project. And I've been with the Greenhouse Project for uh, about nine and a half years now. And, and I think what I want to tell you first and foremost is that this model, to me, is one of the most compelling models out there uh, in terms of what it's able to do from a quality and cost perspective. What I also want to tell you it's a model that is very flexible, very adaptable. What I want to tell you about the greenhouse adopters, those who have adopted this model, is that they're innovators. They're thought leaders that really helped us continue to go forward thinking and what we do. One of those areas would be in the area of short-term rehab in a greenhouse home. Now, when you think about why greenhouse, why would you incur the capital cost and build small homes to do short-term rehab? So here's the deal. I think we have a lot of core beliefs, and I, as a registered nurse, I can tell you I had my own core belief system. And that said that really what the consumer is a kind of a hospitality concierge type service or rehab. The other thing they want is high-tech equipment. They want a, a gym that really has all the, the bells and whistles that will get them home quicker. So here's what the provider wants. The provider wants good occupancy. They obviously want good Medicare reimbursement in their short-term uh, rehab, and they want great outcomes. This is the day where we're watching outcomes. We're watching our length of stay. We're watching our rehospitalization rates. So when you think about why greenhouse, this kind of started for us in 2010 when uh, the Leonard Florence Center for Living, they challenged those core beliefs. And they said, we believe that home is the best place to cover, to recover, and a greenhouse home would be that perfect place. They've had great outcomes, and they've really influenced others who have come after to really incorporate the uh, medic as a payer in their payer mix. So today's call, I'm really happy uh, to introduce Candace Robinson. She is the community nurse liaison with the Village. And she's going to tell you a lot about their experience and uh, the incredible outcomes that they've had, once again confirming that home really is the best place to recover. And what they've done there is to really create a rehab experience for the consumer with strong quality outcomes that are very attractive to ACOs. So with that, um, uh, before I turn it over to Candace, I'm going to let you know that your lines are muted. But should you have a question, I want you to utilize the chat box, which is a feature on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, I'll have Candace take a look at the questions at the end of her presentation so that she will be able to address the questions that you might still be sitting with. Um, so with that, Candice, I'm going to turn it over to you. Good morning, or good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Um, thank you so much. I want to that I have a director for and go to So. Um, in house rehab before we open, and we really uh, have have our success has been a lot of people. And um, she Fern has really coined what we call functional rehab, and I can kind of get into that. So um, I'll start by telling you guys a little bit about my. Uh, Um, at ICU training and was working for Health South when I heard about John Knox Village and um, this amazing new greenhouse 
that they were building. So um, that's my background. I've been here about two years now, and um, we opened last June. We are uh, we have 144 beds, and we have four of those um, homes. We have 12 homes total, with four homes dedicated to short-term rehab. Um, and I'll let Fern tell you a little bit about her background. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yes, I'm Fern. I'm a physical therapist by background. Um, I've spent about 23, 24 years in my career working with the elders. Um, different settings, I went to acute care, outpatient, open up some outpatient clinics, uh, post-acute. And um, in, in one of the um, areas that I enjoyed the most was post-acute care. So you can only imagine that I spend most of my work, uh, most of my time um, in my profession fighting against the system or trying to find a place where I could best implement patient-centered um, care. So um, it's an honor to be here. I'm available for questions. As um, Susan says at the end, if you have anything related to therapy, I'd be happy to respond to you. Thank you for joining us on this. Yeah, awesome. So we'll get going. Um, so we'll talk to you a little bit about um, how the greenhouse looks different for rehab and how we kind of marketed that. Um, we have about um, six skilled nursing facilities in our in our area that you would, I guess, call our top competitors. Um, so when looking at some things that would set us apart initially, of course, um, we have the private suites, which are amazing. Um, we have deep knowing by our empowered staff. We have functional rehab in a real home setting. And then our specialty. We, we wanted to sit back and identify, um, you know, who we were going to talk to, how we were going to grow our business. Um, and so we looked at our top referring hospitals in the area. We looked at our top referring MDs. And we um, started developing rehab protocols based on these shared goals and outcomes. Now, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that. Um, we knew in this area through Fern's connections and through mine that our orthopedic doctors, they didn't like their patients to go um, to any type of facility because of the infection rate. So they would send them home knowing that they needed rehab, but they were willing to take the risk because the risk of um, infection was so high. So Fern and I saw this as an opportunity to be able to isolate and decrease infection. Um, I can go into that a little bit further, but we heard that one of our other greenhouse um, colleagues were, were doing like diagnoses in homes to promote convivium so that people in that home would talk about, oh, I just had my knee done and one leaving at the table would say, oh, I'm leaving tomorrow and it was a great place. But we took it a step higher. We said, what if we went to our ortho docs and we said, we can put 12 people in a home that are fresh post-op ortho and we can completely eliminate the risk for infection. How do we do that? Well, we'll get into it a little deeper, but we do most of our therapy in the home and not our gym downstairs. So this was a real big selling factor and it took on like wildfire and it's been absolutely amazing. So much so that we just got a um, VIP spine surgery collaboration with a world-renowned spine surgeon here. And currently, I have two people in my rehab that are paying private for um, for therapy, so for rehab for their post-spine surgery. So um, that was that was really great. Um, so, like I said, in the homes, we have four homes. We try to admit with life diagnoses. Um, this will help reduce the infection, and this also creates um, a motivating convivium. Um, the conversation that you have at the table with someone who's on oxygen and you're on oxygen and you've just been hospitalized for COPD, it really kind of becomes a support system. So that's what we found, and it's been really amazing. So functional rehab, I'll let Fern kind of talk about how it looks different in a greenhouse home and how we have marketed this. Um, there you go, Fern. Mm -hmm. um, so when we talk about when we talk about functional rehab, 
Um, our uh, therapy sessions are mostly um, held in our homes. So there's no need to have a gym, and most of our rehab guests, we call them, they do not um, come down to the gym we have on the first floor. Um, you might find a therapy session sometimes happening in the kitchen as an occupational therapist is working with, um, with a meal preparation or um, walking, a physical therapist walking in these small spaces in, from the kitchen to the pantry. Um, many times you find a speech therapist working with someone sitting in the dining room. Um, because we like to innovate, because our invitation is always looking at the elder and see what's important for them, I, uh, the therapists are asked to be very creative, and the sessions um, could happen in every um, space in the house, laundry room and the bedroom and the bathrooms and the den and the sun room. So we use every space of the house to do what we call the functional rehab. Uh, we call functional because everything um, is related to what do the elder need to do when they go home. I always say that our elders, the majority of them, when they go home, they are not worried about how, um, how many pounds they have to lift or going to the gym or uh, for how many minutes they have to walk on the treadmill. They're mostly worried about are they going to be able to make it and be safe and be independent in the house. So um, I think our, uh, I, the, our success here, especially with the orthopedic cases, are because we teach them in the house, in our home, how to be independent in their home. So um, as uh, we say, we don't, there's no need to imitate. We don't need to teach them how to lift um, uh, weight in the gym, and so when they get home, they are not sure if they will be able to get a gallon of milk from the fridge. So we, what any, the goals are established based on a cooperation between the therapist and the elder, and what we call the rehab guest. And um, the therapy sessions are very clear for them. It's uh, very um, clear in terms of what's your goal and how we're going to get there, and we train them to do what they need to do in our home before they go to their home. Um, I'll tell you, this is Candace, I'll tell you, um, I like to market this when I give tours and when I'm explaining this to everybody. Um, you know, my, in my past career, I worked for an amazing rehab company, but what they would do is they would get you dressed and wheel you down to the gym every day, and you would do your three hours. And then you go back to your room, sit in your bed all day, um, eat your meals at the table, in your bed, and if you had to use the restroom, you had to use the call bell, and you had to have someone help you. So, and that, that would be on the second week. So on day one to day three, we are all about independence and promoting independence and using the bathroom and getting out of bed, things that you do in your house versus getting you down to a gym and having you sit on the bike machine for 15 to 20 minutes. So that's, it, it, it's real movement, real activities in a real home. Mm -hmm. So I, I love I love when Fern talks about doing you know carrying the gallon of milk around. Um, it's just the ability to imitate and not simulate. Like we are actually and you know if you want if you're going to make a bed, we're going to make your bed in the morning when you wake up. Make it look like their routine at home. So what makes us better? Um, we have physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy seven days a week. Um, we do one-on-one -on -one therapy with your dedicated therapist. That promotes the deep knowing. Um, we have equipment needs that are minimal, and I can, um, Fern can kind of talk to you about how that looks in the home. And then the Shabazine, I'm going to let Fern touch on that. Mm -hmm. um, so the deep knowing, I always say, is our therapists all go through the core training for the greenhouse, and they learn about the importance of really understanding what's important for the elder and get to know them. We're all unique and different. so. Um, unique in certain ways. So during the evaluation, we are already asking questions. We're not only looking at the range of motion and strength and their balance. We're asking them, when you go home, what's important for you? Do you want to go home? Are you um, in drive or you have someone driving? Do you want to go home and be able to play golf? Or what's it important for you to just go home and go from the bedroom to the bathroom? So uh, with that in mind, we establish our goals based on what's important for them. 
Um, the equipment that we have here in our homes are, um, we have a small area, uh, the den, where we store most of our equipment. Uh, we have the weights, the weighted bars, and we have the simple um, hand exercise, different things in terms of uh, just fine motor, um, small equipment in that area. But most of the house, most of the sideways and the hallway, um, as Kendall says, fixing the bed, uh, making the bed in the morning is where the equipment we use to work on um, increased base of support and balance and um, different activities. So the way we do have a, a small um, area we call the sunroom where we have a new step machine um, and we do use that for cardiovascular training. But that, if you do not have the space for that, uh, you know, I always tell the therapist, the long walk in the hallway, a uh, walk in place, walk in their own room, holding on to the bed, that um, would do the job. So equipment is just based on the space. You have a few simple things you can implement. But, um, and I can give you more details about that if you, want, if you have questions. But uh, using the home as a therapy gym is um, how we instruct our and the Shabazim, because they see all the therapy being do, done in the home, later that night when um, your rehab guest, you know, is in the room um, for dinner, you say, oh, get up, come on, come on out to dinner. You don't have to say, well, let me see what your weight-bearing status is. Let me look at your chart. You know, everybody in that home knows that you've been walking all day with the walker, with your, you know, your dedicated physical therapist. So there really is that everybody in the whole house knows mm -hmm. what you can do because they, they're watching you do it throughout the day. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about our success. Uh, like I said, we've been open for um, almost a year now. We have 12 homes of 12. Four are dedicated to rehab, and we are actually um, converting one. It, it has um, six short-term rehab beds, and the other is a long-term resident. So we are, we're, we're converting that because the need has been so great. Um, we, we average about 80 short-term rehab admissions per month of those 50 um, rehab beds, 48 going to 60. We have 99% average daily census. We are full. I am filled up before we're discharged. It's been amazing. Um, we have an average daily rate for Medicare reimbursement of 550 per day, and currently, I have the largest Medicare census in Broward County. I am causing, we are causing at the Woodlands, we are causing huge market disrupt in our competitor facilities. Um, and then what we did, which was really interesting, there's this movement out there called the Affordable Care Act and the Bundle Payment Care Initiative. And if you're familiar with it, it's calling for reduction of hospital stays, but increased quality. And we had the opportunity to partner with a very large hospital system while they were rolling out this bundle initiative. And we said to them, what are your standards? What do you expect from us? And then we based our protocols. We based um, a lot of the things that we did here around their expectations of us. And we have been amazed at the amount of business that we have our, we've grown our business and referrals from this particular hospital. Um, and then also the way we're performing in a greenhouse model, and I'm going to show you some graphs on that, the way we're performing is absolutely blowing the others out of the water. So initially, Holy Cross came to us and they said, we want you to be on a long list of who our preferred providers are. And Within a year, we are at the top of their list. There are six other preferred providers, and Holy Cross has a bundle roundtable meeting with us every quarter where we go and sit at a roundtable with all of those other competitor SNFs and our greenhouse, and they literally unveil the stats. They show us all of our stats and in an open forum show us how we perform um, against our competitors. And I actually have those slides. Um, and I'm going to go over those with you guys so you can see those, just how amazing it is. I mean, proof is in the numbers. Um, and so this was really, really a great opportunity. I think there was an advantage because we were coming into this new 
we were establishing protocols and, and um, we were establishing, you know, what our okay readmission rate was, what our length of stay was going to be. And we were holding our physicians um, responsible for that. And the ones that had long length of stays and had high readmission rates, we did not, we asked them not to follow their patients while they were in our rehab. Um, and so we are coming into it with our doors open versus other places that are having to rewrite 20 years of how they've, they've maintained their short-term rehab. So it was really a great advantage. So here's some of the roundtable discussion that we, now this is information that Holy Cross got from the CMS website. They have been now tracking our bundle, um, they've been tracking our bundle criteria for a year now. So this is a, a year's worth of data and as you can see on, you'll see that the, the post-acute provider were in the red. These are the six that I've protected their names to, to uh, are, um, deleted their names to protect the innocent. Um, so the episodes, we, we have 48 episodes um, of the bundle under these certain diagnoses. And this is a mixed case um, in this one. You can see our cost per episode is the lowest except for one, but that was that person, SJ, down on the bottom only had five episodes. So for 48 episodes, we had consistently the lowest cost significantly. Our average length of stay was right there, wasn't the shortest, um, but if you look down to the next one, our per diem cost was the lowest and our percentage of readmission rate was the lowest. So this on a board with all of the skilled nursing facilities in the room was, was quite, quite shocking. Um, now this is a cost for Q15. Q3, Q4, 16, um, and then all 16. So you can see that our cost and Q3, 15, and Q4, 15, we were not open in the woodlands yet. So you can really get a good idea of our cost and how we've been able to maintain costs um, and that we have an increased cost since we've opened the woodlands. This is extremely powerful, if you ask me. So does the, does the greenhouse cost more? Do we charge more? No. And you can see it right there. Here's some of my orthos. Um, I, my ortho length of stay, as you can see right here as compared to our competitors, is the lowest. Um, and the purple is my historic adjusted. So this was John Knox Village before we started even, before we were cognizant of what the bundle was. So we were the highest and we went to the lowest. Once we were just aware of what the hospital expected from us, we got the right physicians on board and we were very cognizant of therapy starts on day one, seven days a week. We'll go three hours or more per, per day. Um, and our length of stays for knees, our new target goal by the end of 2017 is five to seven days. So um, we're going to, I expect to see this even, even shorter. Sure. And so for ortho, what, uh, the way we're operating before we understood and we, we entered this bundle age, um, we thought that we had to really, in uh, total knee, for example, we thought we had to increase the range of motion and then after that, the week later, uh, work on the uh, strength and then maybe by the third or fourth week, we would start the functional activities even more. So it's not that our elders, our rehab guests are not receiving that type of treatment. But with the ortho, with the bundle in mind, we work on basically get them safe and functional at home. And the home therapist will continue on that, those little details that we use to keep them in a post-acute care um, before the bundle. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. And you may say, well, you've got such a short length of stay, that's really going to cut your profit margin. And what I say to you is when you have your length of stay that short, that hospital will send you four times the amount of patients, and I can show you that because they know you're giving them what they want, and you're doing what's best for the patient because that's, that's what's key. But I um, wanted to show you my 90-day readmission rate, zero readmissions um, for joints mm -hmm. at 90 days, and you can see adjusted. Our adjustment was we just weren't cognizant. We didn't have the right doctor, and we weren't cognizant. That's what it was, and we had, you know, 
skilled nursing Dr. A who's been on staff for 20 years who's got Dr. B and C who cover for him on the weekends. And if they did answer the phone at midnight on a Saturday, he'd say, go to the ER because I'm covering for Dr. A and I don't know anything about your person, your patient. So we eliminated that and that was, that was really key, um, I think. Um, and of course, it's always patient rehab guest choice. But to have that conversation with someone and say, listen, for the purposes of rehab, we really, really want our doctor who will be here three times a week and his nurse practitioner two times a week. Um, and people listen, and they're, they're usually very fine with it. So this is another thing that is pretty impressive. This is, this is all the woodlands. This is when we opened the woodlands and we were up and running all four homes. Um, and this, this is actually false for the entire SNF um, in this, this scale here. And once again, this is the, the names have been deleted to protect the innocent. I mean, the one in the front of the list, I'll be perfectly honest with you, before we opened the greenhouse, this was my biggest competitor. And if you can imagine that if, if, if you go there for rehab, there's a 40% chance you're going to fall. So that's pretty, um, that, and that, that, was, that was the top of the, the food chain here in Broward County before we opened. So what we did see, and we heard about this when we opened our greenhouse, we were told across the country that you would see a little rise in the fall. The reason for this is because of honoring choice. Mm -hmm. And with that, you'll, you may see a little bit of falls. And we did. You can see we bumped up to a little bit around 20, but we dropped back down to 15. And that, that, that's pretty amazing, um, if, if you ask me. And, and we, we, were, we were questioning 15, but then when we sat in this round table, we thought, wow, we just, we're, we're making out like Michael Phelps here. So um, give you another. This one, the high-risk pressure ulcers. Um, I actually, Fern and I, when we, when we saw this, we called Susan Ryan and Fraser and we said, are they seeing this across the country because this is just absolutely telling. What, what is this? I think it's convivium. That's what Fern and I, we think this is convivium. Uh, it, the art of getting up out of your bed, going to the table three times a day to eat a meal like you would do at home versus being able to lie in the bed and having a cold tray delivered to you. So this is, this is just super impressive here, and, um, and I love showing this slide. So we didn't have, um, we do not have um, anyone that really stays in bed for too long, because the first day they might just be discouraged, or some we have, you know, depressed, or just don't want to die hurt, or they have different excuse. By the second day, between the combination of efforts, the therapist and the Shabbat, um, in the happy and joyful party going on outside, everyone wants to be up. So it's all about mobility. They get up, they get out of bed, they go, they sit by the fireplace, they um, go to the card table to put some puzzles together. So I think the mobility and out of the bed is what caused us to have such a successful um, margin for wounds. Yeah, I agree. Sure. Sure. And therapy starts right there. So therapy starts when you wake up and you get out of bed. That's when your therapy starts. So I think that's pretty impressive. Um, so what are people saying? Um, the community, I would literally have physicians saying, okay, if you need rehab, if you can't get into the woodlands, then you need to go home. Um, go there or go home. So everybody loves the small homes with the light diagnoses, and um, the, the doctors are all in agreement that we have the, the ability to, to really decrease, maybe even isolate the risk of infection. Um, therapy is predominantly done, done in a home, and that helps us decrease cross-contamination of the ther um, shared therapy equipment. Um, my discharge planners and the case managers at the hospital, um, they are loving it. They say that finally they have a rehab choice that nourishes the mind, body, and spirit. And um, they're telling me that people with insurances that, that we don't accept, it, it, it's quite hard for them because people are saying they want to go to John Knox and nowhere else. And they've never seen, I, one of them said to me the other day, I have never seen this before in my life. I, I asked for a second choice and they won't give me one. They said, no, we want John Knox. And that, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, we are called the Ritz-Carlton of Rehab 
and I've heard families say, oh yeah, Dr. Rose said you're the Ritz Carlton Rehab, not just because of your building, but because you guys have such great care and therapy. That's really impressive. Um, that's, that's pretty encouraging. Mm -hmm. So what's next? Um, we hope to be an industry leader to help people do what we've done as far as short-term rehab. Um, we love collaborating with the greenhouse and um, want to tell our story, want to shout it from the mountaintop. We need to build another greenhouse. We're, we're full. We're full with rehab. We can't, we can't fill the rehab beds. It's, it's a really great problem to have. Um, and, and sometimes I get upset. I'm, I'm turning down referrals at the hospital, and I have to kind of think to myself, what an amazing, what an amazing conundrum. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking to expand our preferred partnership. With the bundle, we have the second um, and third largest hospital system in our little area. So we're looking at Broward Health and Memorial System. Um, we have gone into a Model 3 rollout with the BP, the bundle payments with Holy Cross. And I'm proud to announce that we have done our first three-night Medicare waiver. So um, someone with a, with a um, spine surgery who didn't need the three nights, we were able to bring them in. I'm hoping to do a lot more of those. Um, I'm looking to get um, relationships with the ERs so we can do a three-night Medicare waiver straight from the ER. I think that would be a great benefit to us and to um, hospitals looking to decrease their readmission rate. I'm going to market that to them. Um, we have the Best Life program, and that's been an amazing program where we um, integrate, integrate. We don't isolate dementia. And um, I can let Fern talk more about that and how that's, that's growing in our long-term care and in our rehab. Mm -hmm. So the Best Life program was introduced to us uh, to the greenhouse recently. So I think the main point of that um, is great learning. We're educating. We're really trying to educate all the staff on that. But working with dementia in the short-term and long-term homes and looking at what they are able to do and um, nurture them on their abilities and not looking at them with what's missing. Uh, for us, the therapists, as we intervene in the long-term and short-term homes, we tend to look at what they are not able to do and then work them to accomplish that goal. And the best life teaches in terms of cognition and in, um, to uh, create meaningful life and to help have the elders engage on the activities, just looking at them more of what they're able to do and um, and enjoy that aspect of their life that is not compromised with the dementia yet. So um, I won't try to say much about that because Anne is the expert and we're just starting, but um, great way of looking at the, especially long term, but we learned um, to address the dementia cases that we have made in the short term homes also. Yeah, and we are, um, we're looking to Specialize in cardiac rehab and pulmonary rehab. We, we saw an opportunity um, for some of our COPD um, exacerbations in this same round table where we um, really blew them out of the water. So um, I'll show you that this slide here. Oh, don't look at the names at the bottom. Okay, well, I'll show you this slide here. So this is what we saw. We saw, um, we knew we were doing orthopedics very well, and, and we know it because there's so much volume that we're getting. But we saw here that our respiratory COPD exacerbations, that our costs were pretty low. You'll see St. John's here, or I'm sorry, you'll see the one in the purple here. They only had one episode, so I don't think that that's enough data to really, um, if you ask me, maybe I'm just a little competitive, but one person, we had, we had about 13. So, um, so we had 13 people with a low cost, with the lowest cost, one of the lowest. And then if you look here, we had um, our length of stay. So our length of stay was was right at um, 25 days, 25 and a half days. And you can see we, we did that pretty well from before um, with our adjusted historic. But our 90-day readmission rate was considerably, considerably lower, which just means, just goes to show that we're so aware of that. We have the physicians on ground. We're, we have that deep knowing of the doctors, of the Shabazz, of the nurses. Um, so we saw this as an opportunity, not to mention um, Fern is a respiratory therapist as well as a physical therapist. Um, so I think that may have something to do with it as well. But 
um, this is going to be our, our next thing. We'd love to, to get these COPD or get more of the COPD exacerbation population. Mm -hmm. So we like to say home is not a place, it's a feeling. Um, and Fern, do you want to add anything? Do you have any? Um, no. Yeah. So we, I, I didn't want to put it, write it down because of course the numbers vary and of course, you know, um, but if, if you if you estimate and if you if you estimate that we get about five forty five hundred and forty dollars on average per day of Medicare reimbursement times our average length of stay, which is about twenty one days, times our average daily census for the last six months, which has been about forty nine, you're looking at about five hundred and fifty thousand dollars in revenue a month, which works out to be somewhere around six point seven million dollars in our first year. So that was that's, that's wow. pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a wonderful place to uh, end. But um, you know, the the proof is in the as they say. You had certainly showed us lots of outcomes. Um, if you've got a question, we've got some time. Please feel free to put it in the chat box, and we will have Candace and uh, Fern take a look at that and respond to those questions. Just a couple things while you might be getting your question composed. I just want to kind of commend you. Some things that, that really stood out for me is the strategic focus that you have and the collaboration of the team. Um, it took real intention and real strategic thinking to kind of go where you've gone and to, I think, really achieve the outcomes that you've achieved. Mm -hmm. I can't say enough about the collaboration of the team, everybody you know, really seeming to work together. And uh, the power of functional rehab, I, I think that's incredible as well. And I have seen very recently some very fancy uh, rehab gyms. Uh, but to your point, you know, this is a rehab that happens all day long in a home and caramelized activities of functional rehab. And the other thing is the person-directed focus. I kept hearing that individualized approach person is unique and their goals and their plan will need to be customized accordingly and isn't that what we are all trying to achieve these days is a real person directed uh, focus to really the outcomes all right so we've got a question what is the staff per patient ratio and what's the staff turnover rate so in our rehab um, and, and we're just talking specifically for rehab right now so in our rehab we have one nurse per 12, so we have one nurse in our rehab home per 12, and then we have a three, two, one revolving um, Shabazz. So on the high times of the day, we have we have three Shabazz in the home. Mm -hmm. in, in terms of therapists, um, it, it varies. You know, a therapist might have um, five, six, two, seven, eight. Um, we have guests a day. It depends on the, the time that we establish for them. Um, the next question about the rug distribution, we were able to maintain um, average of 90% of our rehab guests in the rehab ultra category. Um, is this place to get the minutes in? Because basically uh, our refusal rate is very low. Uh, the therapists go in not to invite them to come to the gym. They will go in to start their day with them. So it's um, they are trained to be very creative, implementing, uh, incorporating activities of daily living, uh, getting them up to the shower, to the restroom, or walking them to the dining room. So it's very easy to accrue those 720 minutes every seven days if you're familiar with the way we, uh, we use the therapy or bug category. So um, we, the majority, we have ultra, but um, if, if it's not in their best interest to receive that 60 to 75 minutes um, session a day. Uh, the therapists are also asked to really provide them with, with what's important to them, despite of the fact that could affect our reimbursement. It's patient-centered. It's what's important for the elder. So it's a very fine balance between um, our business and uh, caring for them with what they deserve. So everyone is make, made aware of that, and they have the freedom to decide what's important for the elder. But, um, so I'm looking here, and I'm finding out my staff turnover rate. 
um, so you guys can kind of see. I, I, know, um, I know it's lower than it was in the institutional model. Um, I do know that, that it's been lower, but I'm going to get some um, actual numbers on that. So I see the, the bay windows um, in the front of the, are the individual rooms. Those are individual rooms. Those windows that you see um, on the front that go all the way down, those are, those are windows in the room. And it's the, the two end rooms are, are the, the most gorgeous. So um, uh, if the, uh, the question, if the RU is, is so high, uh, how the per diem rate was low? Uh, the per diem rate, if you're talking about our cost per episode, what we are saying is how much we are spending on each one of the guests. We're not talking about what we're being reimbursed. The cost per episode that um, the hospital provided to us is our, am I, it, it, no, no, no that's, that's what we're being reimbursed. That's what Medicare is paying us. But it's a combination between the acute and post-acute care. No, that's just ours. Yeah. No, that's just ours. That, that's our cost. That's, that's, what, that's what we're being. Did that, did we, uh, are you so hyper for the so low? Um, I said maybe because of our uh, length of stay. We, I'm not sure if I understand your question. Our length of stay was very short. So if your average $500 to $600 a day with a 10-day stay, uh, it could be that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say it would probably be the, the average length of stay, the lower length of stay. Um, our turnover rate is less than or is under 15%, our staff turnover rate. So I, I have here, it looks like you have a mid-rise. What size land did you have to build your greenhouse facility? We are literally on 80 acres of land. So, um, and, and, and we're completely, we're a uh, retirement life plan community. So we have 80 acres, we've been here 50 years. We have villas, we have over 200 villas um, spread around the land. So land was an issue for us. We didn't have the space to do the ranch style, so we had to do the high rise. Um, I know that it was very tight, and I'll find out um, what size land that we use. I'll get back to you on that. Okay, the base commander at Camp Pendleton wants to create a pipeline from their new hospital to our proposed field nursing short-term rehab long-term care project here in Oceanside. We have partnered with a church adjoining our property and are looking for an experienced operator for the project. Are you interested in <laughs> in the Southern California? <laughs> I, I moved here from San Diego about 11 years ago. This is Candace. I love love Southern California. That's that's awesome. Um, what's the cost of the building? Okay. This is out of my pay grade. I just, this is more, but you know, you know what, Mark would have yeah. these answers, so I'm going to text Mark to see if he, that's my director, to see if he's anywhere around. And, you know, this we can, if, uh, if somebody wants to reach out to us, I will connect them with Debbie, the project guide okay. that works through the architecture and design mm -hmm. process, and include, including the selection of FF&E. So, She'd probably uh, be the best person to kind of talk through some of that as well. So feel free um, to reach out to the Greenhouse Project, and we are, are, would be happy to connect you with uh, Debbie. Okay. Um, any fin uh, final questions? Who is your architect? That is RDG Architects. They're out of uh, Nebraska. And Scott Pfeiffer yeah. was the lead uh, architect. Yeah. And I can't say enough about those homes. They really are beautiful. And to the person who commented on the beautiful bay windows, I have never in my life seen such incredibly large, beautiful windows. And of course, when you're in Florida and you're looking out at the beautiful palm trees and so forth, I think there's something incredibly therapeutic uh, simply by the view. I said it's like living in a tree house or something. And I, I don't know, that would make me get better, feel better pretty quickly. So Any you, you speak about the cost. Um, I saw one about the cost here, and I can I can speak briefly on that. Um, 
we have a thousand residents that live here independently, 800 live independently. We're a CCRC um, life plan community. They had a 50-year-old skilled nursing facility that was very much institutional, shared rooms. And when they looked, when our residents looked to the board for building a new skilled nursing facility, they were the ones who brought up the greenhouse project. And the older administration or the, the other administration said, you know, that's not possible. It's not cost effective. We can't do that. So our residents went on a summer mission and they went and toured, um, there are a group of about eight of them, they went and toured greenhouse skilled nursing facilities in the country and they came back and they spoke to all of the other residents and they raised um, over $5 million of their own money to build this. So when it finally went through and when we finally built the woodlands, um, I know the entire project is a $39 million project. I don't know if that includes um, the furniture in there, but I, I know that it's a $30 million endeavor. So Marsha, you asked us to speak about the turnover rate. I am a guide of uh, homes one and two here. And what I could tell you is, um, in terms of the uh, home staffing, uh, once Shabbat has left since we opened last June, June 20th last year, one nurse has left in the two homes. And I'm, um, I might, uh, I'm just giving you the numbers that I'm aware. And one occupational therapist left because she went to work with children. But um, I don't pursue it. We haven't been open for a year yet, but the staff is really happy working in the greenhouse. It's a very welcoming environment, not only for the elders, but for the staff also. Um, but I would say the Shabbat um, are growing, they're learning, they're training, but it's heavy work. It's a lot of work for them to run a house in the short term. But they, they're excited about being there. I feel like they feel it's personally they're growing and uh, in improving their own skills. So. OK, I have a couple here. Um, um, did you? What, I think it was supposed to be, what did you do when the census was low, at least in the beginning, and how did you manage that? Um, so we opened one home at a time, and we, um, we actually we opened two homes initially, and then we opened the third and fourth home pretty consecutively. What we did initially was we opened two homes, and we put... Um, we put rehab guests in each of those homes. So we, we do one completely, then move on to the next one until the other one completely. We literally had staff in those homes working with low census, and we built it up quite rapidly. Um, we had a, in our legacy building, in our, in our very um, institutional older SNF, we had about 24 rehab guests. So we really started working the business there. We started bringing in short-term rehab before the new building. So we had 24 people initially just to bring over, and we had 48 beds. So we took the 24 and we split them up between the three homes, and we waited for those to fill up, and then we then we opened the fourth home in those three homes. Um, and then what percentage of population is returned to home? That's um, over 80%. Um, and then the other variant is mostly ALF, because we get a lot of ALF, assisted living. Um, and then um, last month we had 72% uh, 70, um, going home. We had a small percentage went to the hospital. And then we also have, um, um, we manage the ones that are discharged to independent living and assisted living. So we are kind of keeping our eyes on that. What I think it says a lot is the very small percentage of our elders go to long-term care. It tells that we are the population, we are addressing higher level, and we're managing to return them to the prior level of function. And my readmission rate, our readmission rate last year, our last month was 1.5%. And that was out of 67 admissions. Wow. Well, that's, um, Candace, that's incredible. Um, Fern? Uh, we are so proud to be your partners, that's for sure. There were some questions about um, 
the bottom floor and, and you know, really wanting to have a deeper look, a visual of what um, it looks like there. What I'm going to suggest, um, I've asked Rachel to keep a copy of those questions and then Candace and Fern, I'd like to invite you back for another kind of part two. And what I'd really love to do is take kind of more of a, a tour, a pictorial tour of you kind know, of the things that are going on in the homes that would really highlight functional rehab, as well mm -hmm. as some of your spaces on the first floor. Um, I, I think we could create something that um, while you described kind of the really important thing that gets us to a lot of the quality and, and the, the outcomes that we spoke about, I think we can really learn a lot more just from those physical spaces because the physical spaces are beautiful and um, I would love for people to be able to see those and I think that would help to create a more comprehensive picture of the role that that beautiful environment does uh, play on one's rehab. And, and, and I do have like a two-minute video on my website if you wanted me to um, click on that. It kind of gives an overview um, of the Woodlands right when we first opened. So, Can you, Candace, um, if you yeah. could put the link to that in the chat box, then okay. folks can um, So I don't, I don't think that we can show it in the webinar room. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'll put the link to that in the chat box. And Rachel will also include that with the PDF of the slides that Fern and Candace worked from today. So thank you both for an incredible, uh, incredible session, a webinar that really has helped to illuminate hopefully all of our thinking about what can be in the beauty of your own of a real home, such as a greenhouse home. So thank you both, and I, everybody who has joined our webinar today, once again. Rachel will send out a PDF and a link to this recording tomorrow, as well as a link to what uh, Candace has just described. It'll give you kind of a two-minute tour of things going on at John Knox Village. Yeah, so I'll send the link you. in just a second. Awesome. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Have a fabulous day. Do you have, uh, what did she say, she said here, do you have more occupational therapists, things like that? Yeah. Yeah.